And how does he know what to do with that strange creature called female? How does he know? If he's in surrender. The more he bends down to the source, the stronger he becomes. And he will not objectify the female, and she will realize he's not objectifying her, so she will respect him even more. And he will not give in to her tantrums and demands. That's her job as a woman to, to, to make the man do what she wants. Mm. He will do what she wants without her realizing that he's doing what she wants. And then it works. <laughs> Namaskaram. Um, I'm Neguno from Berlin. Um, for me, it's totally new. Uh, it's first time here in India, and how people are here, and to see um, a culture without shame and guilt. How this is not there, and in in the West, how this is so deeply intertwined also in sexuality, how it's so so perverted and uh, leads to so much suffering within and between female and male. I want something from her, she wants something from me. And I make an object of her, she makes an object of me and then there is no uh, contact possible. Um, and I'm I'm also from this uh, Sangha with a teacher who um, offers the armoring. And I, I start to see more how, how, how brave this work is that he's doing. And, and you also said, like, it's so explosive, so dangerous, um, like, really goes into this, what um, makes this sexuality also dirty or. Um, or um, And um, is something you want to know? Yes. Yes, between uh, man and woman, how I don't know what the processes are that you are undertaking with de-armoring, and I think it has to do with sexual energy and transforming of this energy, what is spoken about here is that without surrender, no truth. And in these processes, the surrender is happening to the experience. You understand what I'm saying? The surrender is happening to the experience. It is not happening to the truth. The experience is an emotional experience or a physical experience or a conceptual experience or a transformative experience also but it's the experience, it is not a neutral impulse that the surrender is happening to whatever those processes are no surrender, no truth and the surrender happens not to the process not to the suffering, not to the challenge, but the surrender happens to the center of the being, to what is here called the Antaratman or the Antar Guru, or truth, or presence, or the surrender is happening there. The more surrendered you are, whatever culture you're born in, it doesn't make a difference. The more surrendered you are, the less you are operating with ego, with ahankar, with ego. The less you operate with ego, the more you can align with this truth and therefore with the truth in that female out there. You cannot align with her if you don't align with the truth within. It is just not possible. So a male, in your case, you're in a male body, 
a male who is in deep surrender to the truth and is operating from that truth will perforce have a relationship of, of harmony with the female. And when that relationship is there, it doesn't mean that there is nothing interesting happening. Oh, harmony is boring. No. It means that the, that the way a male and female have to function with each other will be perfected. The question is, are you ready to do that surrender process? You're doing the de-armoring, you're doing gestalt therapy, you're doing process-oriented psychology, you're doing all these things, yes. Where's the surrender? Where's the surrender? That's, the, that's your key, the golden key. It's surrender. Are you doing the surrender processes? You do that mm. and you'll see the change. Yeah, I feel like it's like clear, clearing up to make more space to, to surrender deeply, more deeply. Yes, to that. It's yes. not about Kundalini awakening, like playing with energy, but it's really like yeah, to, to make it clear. Because if a male is surrendered, then he is strong, then he can stand up and do his, his work as a male in this world, it's not so complicated. If he's supposed to become this ball of emotions and express them and all, it's not working, he's not a man then. And then the woman will spit him out. She'll make him show her all his emotions and after that she'll say, okay, bye. Because essentially, and I'm talking about hetero experiences, essentially the female is looking for strength and a protector. Whatever they all say, finally it boils down to that. And if the, if the male gives in to her demands all the time, she doesn't respect him. And how does he know what to do with that strange creature called female? How does he know if he's in surrender? The more he bends down to the source, the stronger he becomes. And he will not objectify the female, and she will realize he's not objectifying her, so she will respect him even more. And he will not give in to her tantrums and demands, that's her job as a woman to, to, to make the man do what she wants. Mm. He will do what she wants without her realizing that he is doing what she wants. And then it works. So all that energy clearing and all, that's one part of it that you can do if you want, you don't have to, but you can. The main thing is that surrender thing. Yes. It, it just... It's so solid, the experience over 22 years of observing people just simply do it and it just works. He, look him, exhibit A over here, he used to be so, he used to be not even able to stand straight, he was doing all those uh, dynamic meditations and I don't know what all he was doing, which is fine, it's part of that, it's part of a spiritual seeker's path to experiment and it's beautiful, I'm not putting it down, but after a point it's like, okay, now wake up, Smell the, the, the tea or coffee or whatever you drink in the morning. Yeah, I, I feel where I'm hanging that um, my attention goes to the woman and try to understand. Or wrong, I, wrong, I, I wrong. take her by her words and when no, there's no, no, uh, no, 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 com no. complaint. Uh, wrong, wrong, wrong. But yeah, <laughs> to surrender to myself, to be with myself. Exactly. <laughs> and then she'll come to and, you. And to keep it simple yes. within myself. It's not to uh, get lost in all those stories and then yeah. thing happens like shaking, fear coming yeah. up. A woman like, never realizes how much the men are fearful of them. Yes. They have no idea. They, they see the man and they see strength because internally they've been geared to think that men are strong, they are not. They are only strong if the woman makes them strong. And they, for themselves, are strong if they go inward. The moment you start giving in to that, it's mess. Show me one case where it's not like that, even one. And the man will be strong if he is centered, if he is in surrender to the truth, and he's trying to distinguish between the ego and the truth. If he knows, oh, this is my ego pushing me, uh, let me, let me find out what the truth is. And he acts from that truth, there'll be a line of women standing there, not just one. And then you can choose. 
See, finally, it's a simple thing, this male-female thing in a hetero setup. It's not so complicated. You will never understand her, she will never understand you. If you understand that first, you're already very successful. And if that happens, that I can choose all those women, it's not about choosing. I don't need the woman, and the woman doesn't need me, and then... Then she... you can be together in harmony, and also something binds you which is larger than let's buy a house together, which nobody wants to do anymore because they don't know when is she going to leave, when is he going to leave. So people don't even do that together anymore. I mean, look at Europe, look, look, look at Germany, you come from Germany. What's going on there? The only people who seem to have some sort of uh, sane lives are the Muslim immigrants. They have the four and five children, and you guys are there sitting and figuring out uh, whether this has to be... Uh, I mean, it, it's a mess. It's a destruction, self-destruction of a society, whether you like to hear it or not. Rather than just be in a state of surrender, move inward and take that woman that comes and just keep it simple. Otherwise, uh, you can start speaking Arabic in another ten years. That's what's going to happen to your culture and your people, because all of you are more concerned about all this instead of, instead of relearning surrender. I'm not saying that it's a known thing, but it's the key, it's the golden key to resurrection of European culture. Take it or leave it. And that starts with you. Mm. Just at least try it out, no? Yes. Once at least. Just stand quietly and just say, this urge to action, is it coming from the loud noise of the ego? Or is it coming from the, from the Antar Guru, from the Antar Atman? If it's coming from the Antar Guru, then take that action. And if it's coming from the, from the Ahankar, the ego, then stay back, no, I won't take that action. You do that five times in a day and see how strong you feel at the end of the day. Mm. And it's, it's very inspiring to see the Indian people here, like, to, to see the woman in such a natural beauty and their femininity. And, and also men, they seem to be soft, but not like soft eggs. <laughs> um, like okay. With, with themselves. Is, okay, it's yeah. all right. Ah, scrambled eggs. Yeah. Scrambled eggs. Mm. Mm. Strange imagery. <laughs> I tell you why they are like that, it's because of many... I mean, they haven't grown up in, in this strong Abrahamic, you know, ethos. But it's not just that, it's also because you know, from childhood that surrender thing is inculcated. And of course not in the cities, because there it's already Europeanized, Westernized. But otherwise, in the rest of the country, there's a lot of bending down, bending, bending. And we can start it in Europe, no? We can start it in America, why not? We don't have to change the whole country. We can start it in your Sangha, you can do it in your Sangha. Start to inculcate surrender more as an essential part of the practice. It's very, very crucial. And you can start it with yourself also. You know, just do that Kriya, just bend down and ask, is this action of mine coming from the truth or is it coming from my ego at least once in a day and then twice and then three times and four times and you build up that, that Shakti in yourself like that. And then you don't have to figure out the woman and be shaking inside and unsure of the relationship. You are centered, you're quiet. A woman will always be attracted to a man who is centered and strong in that surrendered state. She will come to him, and also the right woman will come. And then you to, to make babies. <laughs> Take up the responsibility of fatherhood, that shows strength. A spiritual seeker who becomes a father is much more contributing to society than one who's not. Now he's scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared, children are amazing. They teach you a lot. 
it's also fun to be around children. It's not just horrible. It's a little horrible, but lots fun. See, I know that what I'm saying is a simplification. I know that it sounds simple, but at one point, all of you people, n not all, but a lot of you, have been through so many practices, so many this and that, and this system and that system, and, and finally that system is inside you, it's the truth, go with that. I'm not saying you have to come and join this movement, or be a part of this movement. Uh, I'm saying you can just do it for yourself. It's, it's not an ideology, it's just, it's just survival tactics for a spiritual seeker who has been through the burn. There are people who have spent 20, 30 years seeking for the truth and not finding it, and there's a deep sense of suffering because they know that they haven't found it. But it's not to be sought outside the system, it is to be sought within the system, staying inside, not moving into cosmic, transcendental, it's here and now, it's within the system, here and now. There just is joy in that, a little bit more than... I mean, this is a tough life, you know, living is tough, but when that joy is there, then there is a smile on the face through the day. So you practice it.